Hi, Jewish mom. So I'm so happy today to be hosting um, my dear old friend, um, Ilana Mizrahi. Um, so um, I've known Ilana for over 20 years. Wait, when did you meet Solomon? I'm trying to figure out. You met, Sol you met your husband? I remember, it was ex I remember exactly, because I remember going to your home in Pesach. I met him in 2000, January 1st, 2000. We, and um, so I was in 99, 2000 is when I first met you. Wow. So it's, so it's been, been about 20 to 21 years. And um, so, so basically, Ilana was my husband's student at Nishma 21 years ago. Um, and then, and I remember when she met her husband and that, and I remember that you were straight out of Stanford, new in Israel. And so I've seen Baruch Hashem, like, not seen you over these, over the your journey of becoming like a mother and an expert mother who helps other mothers. <laughs> And then other women who want to become mothers and are struggling to become mothers. Um, and so, so let me read your, to introduce you. Um, Ilana Mizrahi is passionate about helping Jewish women to connect, to connect to Hashem, to themselves and to each other. She's a mentor, published author, writer and lecturer. In addition to teaching, Ilana also specializes in women's health, infertility, prenatal and postpartum care, postpartum depression, birth and, for, and fertility related trauma, and, as well as anxiety. She also works as a doula, a birth educator, women's healthcare practitioner, parenting coach, Shalom Bayit coach, reflexologist and massage therapist. She teaches parenting classes and Shalom Bayit classes. And Milana brings Torah into her healing practice and healing into her Torah classes. I'm originally from the Bay Area in California. Ilana is, is a graduate of Stanford University. Um, she lives in Jerusalem with her husband and precious children. You can learn more about her at W, and I'm gonna be putting this in the description, the, the video description, the interview description, um, at um, www.ilanamizrahi.com. Um, Ilana Mizrahi is spelled E-L-A-N-A-M-I-Z-R-A-H-I. -A -A no C-H, just H. Okay, Ilana. <laughs> Okay, so you have but Jenny, with all that wonderful introduction. Yeah, <laughs> with all that wonderful introduction, I will tell you that my highest moments where I most know that it's like my highest moments is going to be six o'clock in the morning where this one wants cereal and this one's having a fit and this one and all those things that you just read that sound like, wow, it doesn't mean anything because in that moment, I'm doing the most important job I could possibly be doing. So, wow, wow. I'm precious. You that. know, you can literally give me goosebumps. This is like my, this is like my. <laughs> Wow, that's beautiful. And even at six in the morning, six, six is a hard hour. The hard hour. Wow. Okay, so that's beautiful. So can you tell me like how, so now you're like a from mom living in her house with a bunch of kids. Right. How did you go from being like, you know, from growing up like um, as you grew up in the Bay Area, going to Stanford to being the Ilana Mizrahi that we, that we, that we know today? Ironically, I did not grow up with any kids. You know, I'm, I'm not an oldie child. I do have one sibling, but my brother is 10 and a half years older. Wow. So I did not grow up with any kids, no cousins around me, nothing. Um, I had this like always, I don't know where it came from inside of me. I wanted to be a mommy. I knew that. Wow. And I was because of my academics and I loved studying, you know, and I loved it. I was very much pushed, you know, as um, and encouraged like, professional, professional, go out there and, you know, you could be the president if you want, you could do whatever you want. And um, when I was 19, I was in Washington, D.C. I was, I was keeping Shabbos already, like I, keep, I wow. kept Shabbos already since I was 18. Interning Washington, D.C., I was actually interning for APAC. And I had this like, wait a minute, I just want to be a mommy sensation of, I know you can have all worlds, but you can't. <laughs> And, um, and I decided, you know what, I, I, I went to France the next year and then I, gra I graduated a year early and then I, I graduated international relations and I said, I just really, I want to go to Israel. I came to Israel. I started studying in the Shemot where I met you and your wonderful husband and growing. And then I met my husband who comes from a very traditional Syrian Mexican family, um, very traditional. And I went to Mexico, we got married and I thought, well, for sure, right away, I'm going to get pregnant. I'm going to have a kid. And one year went by, two years went by, three years went by, and there was no baby. Um, in the meantime, doing a lot of conventional medicine. I remember uh, this year. I remember this year. Yeah. In Davening, Ilana Mira Bacherna, is it that? Exactly. Okay, I remember exactly. that. Yeah. yeah. And the wanting and not 
you know, just feeling also very alone and also not understanding, not seeing a big picture in my body at all, not connecting even to my body, just going through a process of fertility treatment. So then wow. we, we came to Israel after three years, we, we were here another year and we took a break from all, all that. Um, I felt like a newly married person again, like it was a relief. No one's asking me how long you've been married, when it knew wow. what's going on. Um, we came here and another year went by and we still didn't have any. And I thought, no, Sarah, you may know, step foot in Eretz Akredish, I'm going to have a baby. It didn't happen. So we didn't, then after a year, we did another treatment and that failed and I broke. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm saying you spent a year not doing any treatments. Not doing any treatments. Just we were, my husband was learning and I was learning half day. I started to do, you know, teach English, have a bakery business, whatever I could do. Um, and then we, but then we started another treatment and it didn't work. And I just felt like a such, I felt actually like a failure. Um, which is something that's very important that actually at any stage and any part of our lives, we can't attribute an outcome to feeling like a success or failure because it's not our hands. More, than, more so, you know, something like fertility or motherhood. But I feel like also, I think I felt like my body deceived me and, um, and, I, and I said, okay, Hashem, you want, it'll happen. You don't want, it won't happen. And then a friend of mine suggested, why don't you try alternative? So I said, you know what? It can't hurt me. I grew up in Northern California. Totally, yeah. you know, granola. Yeah, my yeah. Mother, my you're, you're born into this. Yeah, totally, totally. And I'm like, oh yeah, I just forgotten about it. And we tried, and it happened to be not that it's, you know, I, I don't want ever to anyone get an impression that if you do one thing, it's going to make something happen because it's not. But um, we, it happened to be that Hashem sent it that way. We tried a lot of just different natural modalities. I became pregnant with my eldest. I had really chesed, beautiful pregnancy, a beautiful birth, and. Uh, my child, he's, my oldest is 16 and a half. He was born in Shisho Fesa. And I turned to my husband. I said, this is what I want to do. I just want to help women. Like, I, I want to help women. I didn't know what that meant, but I knew I wanted to help. And I said, okay, the first thing I'll learn is massage. How do you touch someone? How do you, you know, and going into nutrition, going into um, just one step at a time, building up tools. I just call them tools for me. They're just tools. Yeah. And um, getting a very much actually involved in prenatal and postpartum. And then as my family grew, Baruch Hashem, it's growing. It is, it, it's, it grew. Um, my own discovery of, wow, motherhood's really hard. And yet that's why I'm here and it's really beautiful. You know, no one yeah. can tell me that. Also birth, I mean, every aspect of the pregnancies, they're really, really hard. So part of it is, okay, how can I, what tools can I also help myself to make it that I can feel stronger in my role, in my tough kid as an ima? or even just as a woman also. And, um, and how can I help other people? So that's basically what I do. Wow. Wow. I try to um, anyways. It's all, you know, everything of course is just, there's no also one, like there's no right or wrong. I, I've realized when it comes to any kind of like health, especially we see this nowadays, you're going to get two totally different opinions if you ask two different people. So there's no right or wrong. Right. It's, uh, it's more finding a balance and a clarity and just seeing what works good for you. Like I always tell, I would like, you know, especially talking to a mother is what works for you and your family. You know, it has to be, make realistic, has to be something realistic, make realistic goals, what helps you and what could work for you. Because if it's not something that's realistic, you're not going to do it. Right. Right. Um, Cassie, just, I would love to hear. So I definitely want to hear uh, about those tools um, to help the uh, moms who are listening. Um, but um, I want to know, like, um, so how, um, over the past 16 years, how do you think being a mother has changed you as a person? I think it's made me a much better person. Mm. Um, I think that, uh, I mean, I, I think it, it, Hashem gave me an opportunity to learn more compassion, to have more patience, to learn how to be flexible, to learn how to let go, you know, all the, I mean, it's given me an opportunity to work on myself for 24 hours, seven days a week, as far as me does wise. Mm -hmm. And that if I think really, if a woman taps into working on herself and her me then actually she will instinctively know how to parent in a way. Like, I think it's yeah. is something that we're born with. We have to have confidence, um, but it does take a lot of self-work and, and um, it's been so rewarding. It's also so challenging. You know, you, I could like ace, you know, a calculus, you know, and I could ace, you know, any, give me any exam I'll study. I mean, not, I don't know about nowadays, but like in the past I was so successful 
you just study and you'll get a result and like, yeah. it'll be fine, you know, or like a job or this or that. And it comes to motherhood and I'm like, a three-year-old can like floor me. And I could be like throwing my hands up and saying, I don't know what to do. Wow. And I find that humbling and beautiful. You know, I, I, wow. it was actually the first time when I couldn't conceive that I realized how I'm not in control and how humbling the process of parent. And I wasn't even a mother yet, right? I was just wow. trying to become a mother. Wow. So I think that um, it's, pro it's probably, you know, it's probably the first thing that you'd failed at in your life. Keep yeah, people fail. Like it, you, it it you, you, went, you were like a top of your class like, in high school. Like you exactly. went to Stanford, you're like it, interning at APAC. You're like, da -da -da, you're on the, yeah. and then you got, even you got married to this great guy. You're young, beautiful, you know, whatever, successful. And then Jenny, like your so first humbling. time. It yeah. was so humbling. Yeah, it was like, Ilana, you're not in control. You can't just decide things. You know, you have like a certain plan also. Like, I, you know, we have this like timeline or someone could do like an Excel sheet <laughs> saying, okay, this is what I have to do, this, 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 this. And when it comes to motherhood, I mean, you, you know, you'll make an appointment and then there'll be an ear infection or there'll be a this and you're like my whole day, you know, like I, right. or it, it, it's, um, it's something where, but I feel like that's part of the beauty of a woman, you know, even a, even a woman who's not a mother, Mm -hmm. She has the potential for flexibility in our bodies because we have a womb and that womb is something that monthly during your menses will, ex you know, go from being a, a pear to a grapefruit. So that in itself mm -hmm. expands. And then when you're pregnant, I didn't know that every month it expands. I didn't water. Know that. Every month, because it fills with blood and, you know, and then it sheds. And then after that, you have the period of if a woman's pregnant, she's going to go to um, an a watermelon, you know, and then wow. and shrink. And even uh, even if a woman is, you know, menopausal and it's been after or even the, a girl, it's still there's a potential there. You know, even if God forbid somebody doesn't have a womb, that there's a spiritual potential for us to be flexible. But we have to tap into it because it's not. Wow. That's um, great. I love that. It's a quach. It's a wow. wow. Okay. So um, can you tell me, so you see a lot of women, you have a clinic and you see a lot of women, you live in a, in a very large a community of like in Harnow, up in Jerusalem, this, you, you work with so many, almost like almost, uh, almost all Orthodox women, right? Mostly Orthodox women. Um, the majority, so what, what, yeah, I would say yeah. like mostly. So what, what, what issues are you seeing in your clinic among moms? So specifically mothers, I think the number one issue I would say is a feeling of overwhelmed and drained, like physically, emotionally, just drained. Um, I think that, um, or even in the not yet mom, but pregnant, expecting your first child already. I even saw this yesterday, actually, I had a client and she's, she's already past her due date. And I was just mentioning to her, you know, she happens to be Israeli. So I was saying to her, oh, it's so, I said to her, go to your mother and your mother-in-law's after the birth. Like, you're going to go. I want you to go. And she's like, no, I don't really know. And I thought to myself, you're crazy. Why can't you allow yourself to be taken care of? You're Israeli. You know, I, you know, we know as a, as a person living in another country, you don't have your parents near you. You are so, it's so hard after birth, yeah. you know, to be taken. So, if, and I'm thinking she, she's over, we're, we're raising our daughters with such a feeling that they have to be independent, that it's not okay to be taken care of. Like wow. I thought to myself that I, you know, I was trying to pound in her head, the idea of this is your parent, your mother's going to be so happy to take care of you. And anyway, she took care of you for 20 years. So <laughs> another yeah. two weeks of enjoying this grandchild, um, it comes from this, I feel like the drained and overwhelmed of um, we're also living in an age of a like a, a lot of mental busyness, which is actually even more draining the physical. It could be more draining the physical busyness. And um, so I would say my number one thing that I find with mothers is a sensation of feeling drained and physically and, and emotionally. Yeah, totally. Um, is this, is, 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 are these feelings that you've experienced like as a mom, like at different For stages? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. And also I find that if I don't value what I'm doing, I'm going to really feel that. And, or if I feel like I'm doing something that's not that I would want to be doing, like, um, you know, like I love to cook, let's say, but I'm not, I don't really like to clean so much. For example, I like the house clean. I like, yeah. I like the end results, yeah. you know, I like the house clean, but not necessarily. And I like, like, I like that we have food, but I hate going through, I hate going grocery shopping. To me, it's just wears me out. I'm telling you, yeah. I step into the supermarket and I don't know why in, in Israel for me, it's more draining than in other countries, Yeah. but I have, and it's a constant. When you start having a large family, you have kids that eat, you're always, 
I feel like I'm always shopping. I, I, it's not just yeah. like a one, let's go to Costco, you know? And even then I'm not, a mother would be. So I have these moments where for sure in the supermarket where I'm like, I can't deal with this, you know, especially. And then I try to do two things. One is let's say it's around the Chagim time, the holidays or Erev Shabbos on a Thursday. There's always this part that I have to tap into saying, wow, this is beautiful. So many people are buying for the, you know, I have to do that mental switch where I'm like, Alana, you're in control of your thoughts right now. And you got to, you got to see beauty in this. Yeah. Um, the, the, uh, what that, the second thing that I do is I tell myself, remember the goal. I need food. <laughs> so yeah. I'm just focused yeah. on the goal. And I say, and you like the goal. Way. You like the goal. You like, food. I, want, you know, yeah, I like food. food. I want to eat. I need it. I want it. I enjoy it. I, so it's also like the clean house. Like if I'm thinking that, oh my gosh, why do I have to clean, you know, the toilets or why do I have to, you know, pick up 20 times already? Like 20, how many times can you possibly sweep the mess, you know, and you get so what happens is we start complaining and we forget, we just need to focus on what's the goal here. I want a clean house. So, okay, maybe that means I have to hire somebody to help me. It doesn't mean that I have to do it, but right. I have to be goal orientated instead of complaining orientated. Right. Um, because, right. and I find that also, I just always try to tap into my house as a base of and I'm like a conga doll. I really do. I, I don't know if wow. I'm, I'm trying to brainwash myself, but <laughs> it helps. And I say to myself, you're pay just like the coin had an apron and they're sweeping up, you know, in the ashes. Ilana, focus in that your avoda right now is, is this, you know? And right. it's not also, Jenny, it's so important that we don't get caught up in, um, well, it's going to be dirty in five minutes anyways. Because then we're seeing that it's... Um, we're not seeing the building because we're putting bricks mm -hmm. and we're not understanding that every time I clean up, I'm adding to this beautiful home, you know, and I'm, I'm showing my kids also that I care. I mean, it's also yeah. showing that I care about our home again, that you, again, it's not necessarily has to be me. I could hire somebody. I could ask my kids to pick up, but the idea is not to make it into this work that has no value and that it's just a bother. Right. Can I tell you, I had an amazing encounter yesterday. I have a neighbor um, who waited um, over two decades to have a baby. Wow. Incredible. So, um, and so yesterday, so this is a week, there's a lot of um, parent teacher meetings. And I am so, I've been doing these parent teacher meetings for now around 20 years. And I'm so burnt out. I have no clock to like, whatever. And I run into this woman and her daughter is now three. And, um, and she's on her way to a parent. Her, and she said, she says, she says, Hannah Jenny. She said, she said, I'm on my way to my first parent teacher meeting. She said, I have goosebumps. I'm so excited. I, I can't believe it. And I don't know. It was just, it was just like, like we just, for, you know, this is like her, first, she's like, she davened for 20 years, over 20 years to have, to be able to sit among the mothers at the parent teacher meeting. Um, whatever, just like having gratitude and appreciating. This is beautiful. Thank you. I think that's so, that's so true. Like always, I try to go back to that moment when I couldn't, but I think to myself, I got that gift. Actually, I see it as a gift that I yeah. had that, but if you don't, if you didn't, like, let's say a woman who got, who became, who was, had, it was a mommy 10 months after she got married yeah. and every, and, and she kept having kid after. So I think to myself, what, so what is she going to have? You know, she, but I, I think that there, she just has to also tap into the fact that, you know what, number one, it's okay, I'm, I feel like also forgive myself, I don't have to feel guilty. This is really hard. Yeah, it's not as if we don't have to even think to like, wow, I, I took me so many years to have a baby. And then I, I should feel guilty for feeling like this is a lot of work, because it is yeah. a lot of work. It is a lot of, yeah. but it's a lot of work. And it is hard. It's also hard, the opposite, the mother who's got, you know, I have, I have tummy dot, I have students who I call them my tummy though now that they have like five kids under the age of five <laughs> yeah. and um, or clients who have, you know, or post, you know, I have dealt with a lot of large families that they're really small kids altogether. Mm -hmm. And she didn't have that longing and that waiting. So what is she supposed to do? She just still has to tell herself, my goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm really raising a Baruch children. Yeah. I think she still has to remind herself of the greatness and the, and no matter how, you know, like the, we don't have to go to that place of the, of lacking in order to feel filled. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you were telling me that you have like a, that you have an approach to help moms yeah. who are feeling depleted. Um, can you tell, can you tell us about that? Yeah. So I, I have a couple of tools 
right? Again, it's every mommy's gonna, something's gonna speak to her. And actually within these tools, I think there's always one tool where you're like, you know what, that's gonna be the one that maybe I gravitate towards. So my number one rule is it's not all or nothing when it comes to mommies, um, especially not when it, anyways, when it comes to anybody, but especially mommies, it's not if I, I can only do everything or I can't do anything. Yeah. It's, you're going to find whatever you can do, do it. And if even if it's a small thing, then that's already huge. So one, one set of tools I have, it's called the basic pH. Um, I actually learned this and I, I studied for two years trauma therapy and it was a tool that we trauma, 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 it's a tra trauma I studied, therapy. I studied, yeah, I, I studied, um, it's a, a somatic way of releasing trauma from body. I incorporate yeah. that a lot with birth, birth trauma, wow. but, um, it was a tool to how you deal with stress basically. And I kind of converted it in, and put it into what I just find helps mothers. Um, that besides there's no trauma, but yeah. <laughs> so it's called, it's, the acronym is basic pH. That's how we think about it. I mean, that's how we remember it, basic pH. And the first one of the basic pH, each letter stands for a different tool within that tool. Okay. So the first one B is belief, which means Amuna, Bitachon, it's my belief. I can just say me personally, um, and this is going to be the person who more taps into the spiritual, you know, the person who like, they're going to, they're going to turn on a sheer, they're going to turn on a class and it's just going to make them feel really good. So for me personally, personally, for example, when I had my oldest son, I was totally clueless, right? I, I, I hadn't held a baby before, like a newborn, forget about it. I never babysat. So here I have this beautiful, and he woke up every 45 minutes wow. for the first six months because I was like, Mrs. Natural, we're not going to let him cry. He's going to sleep next to me, you know, totally. Yeah. I'm telling you every 45 minutes I would wake up and it was so hard and so challenging. I remember the, the tears of exhaustion and for me was tapping into just holding him and saying, you're such a tzaddik and also just davening to Hashem to give me koach. And even to this day, he's now 16 and a half, right? So I have to wake him up. You know, he, he likes, he sleeps such small amount of hours because he gets home really late from yeshiva and he gets up really early. And I'm like, this is so unhealthy. You're not, you're growing teen, you know, you need. And I say to myself, Ilana, just tap into, I daven, Hashem, whatever amount of sleep he gets, whatever amount of sleep I as an ima get, let that give me the koa that I need. Wow. And that, in a, you know, so my first thing is belief. It's amuna. It's tapping into a Kadosh Baruch Hu. For some mommies, it might be saying tilin. For some, they're going to say, no, Alana, that doesn't work for me. Yeah. But I always say, this is a huge, huge tool that also, even just davening to Hashem to connect to the spirituality of being a mommy. Like, mm -hmm. let's say you feel nothing and you can say, Hashem, can you help me with that? Can you help me? And, and of course, tefillah, when we daven for our children, I find more, I'm more endearing to them. Like they, I find more love towards them. Right. It's funny. It calms me. Like I just, you know, same also with my husband, I, I, I daven for them. You know, I, I, I connect to that. So the first one, the B for the basic is just, is belief. It's remembering also when I was holding that baby that was waking up every 45 minutes is that, wow, Hashem, you're giving me this tough key. I'm going to, I can do it. You know, again, I might need help. I need to have a, a night nurse. I might need to let, let him cry. I, it, that doesn't, the, the how, but I have to have the Hashem. I have to believe that you created me for this mission wow. so I can do it. So that actually gives me physical koach because when I'm emotional, you know, when I'm tapped into my spiritual koach, I feel physically stronger. Um, so that's B. And then we have wait, 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 Can I just interrupt you? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, so can you, um, can you talk, you're talking, we, when we talked before the interview, you're talking about the, uh, about the holiness of a woman's, like the gift of a woman's body. So you're just talking about yeah. thanking Hashem for the body you gave me, I can nurse this baby. Can you talk about that a little bit? So we know also in Tefila Chana, well, maybe we don't know, but um, there's, there was Chana, right? And she was, she was barren and she didn't have any children. And um, there it's, we read this actually in Rosh Hashanah, like the story of Chana. And actually from Chana, we learn how to even, how to daven, how to approach Ashkodo Shebuchu. Chana is our source. It's not any, even though Avram fixed, you know, Shachri and Yitzhak fits Mincha, you have the Avot fixing the three tefillot. But when it comes to how to talk to Ashkodo Shebuchu, it's a woman. And who is this mm -hmm. woman? A woman who wanted to be an Ima. So Chana approaches, she's, she goes to the Mishkan, she approaches, and she says, you gave me this body. You gave me these breasts that are supposed to nurture another. Where's the child? You know, why yeah. did you give me this body? What, how? So I always, I think it's a beautiful thing to tap into the idea is that my body was created for this. 
So Hashem, let me use it and the way, let me take care of this child. And sometimes that really is, I mean, I think the shock after birth and that first, if a woman's nursing, to know that she's every two hours getting up, you know, it should only be, it shouldn't be 45 minutes. It should really, it should yeah. be two to three hours. Yeah. Um, it's shocking to you that, you know, and the, and the miracle of being able to produce the exact nutrients that what the baby needs. And also a woman who can't nurse, if she's just holding that baby to her breast and just skin to skin and bottle feeding skin to skin. Um, a friend of mine who's a registered nurse, it was such a, it's such a good advice for a woman who can't nurse. It doesn't mean she can't have that physical contact and knowing that this breast still is, yeah. you know, connecting to this child. So, mm -hmm. um, but that's, even though it sounds physical, it really is coming from the spiritual part of knowing that Hashem gave me this body that I'm created, that I have to trust it, especially also in birth and pregnancy, which is very challenging. It's a very challenging time is to know that this is what I was created for. If Hashem gave me this um, the job, this tough kid right now, physically, this is what I need to be doing. And I think the one thing also, what's not good for us in this generation is we don't listen to it. Like, so for example, I get a lot of calls, Jenny, from mothers who are, or mothers to be, and they tell me, Ilana, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And I'm like, you need to take a nap. You know, for me, it's a, like yeah. tired, take a nap. And there's a sense of guilt or like, but what do you mean? Like, I can't just lie on the couch all day. They told me this. I can't just like lie, to, you know, the first three months of pregnancy, you just want to sleep. So I say to them, you know what? You're doing by not doing. You're breathing. You're, you're, you're breathing. So if you, if I really find that if a woman's body is telling her something, and she's, and that's the body that's doing the tough key. Now I'm saying that you ran a, you know, a mile. And so your body's tired. I'm talking about, you know, you're just breathing. You're tired from carrying another human being. So mm -hmm. we have to tap into that and understand that Hashem is giving me, if Hashem is telling me this, why can't I tell myself and give myself permission? Right. Right. Wow. Once I heard a woman, she said, she said, you know, the rest of people who aren't pregnant, they're all human doings. We're the real human beings, like pregnant women. Like you're just being, wow. and that's like your, you did what you're supposed exactly. to do, you're a human being. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 24 hours, you're doing gemilut chasidim, just by, by breathing, because you're, you're nurturing, you're taking care of, you know, which also the word rechem in Hebrew, womb, is rechamim, it's, it's mercy, it's, it's, a, it's like this place of rach, rachmanas, of taking care. Right, right. I think also like what, like what you're saying also is that, we don't have enough compassion for ourselves. I think like part of it is that we live in these communities. We're Orthodox moms living in communities of Orthodox moms. And so, you know, we look around us and we see women who are doing the same thing, who are having, you know, who are having, you know, larger than average families in many cases, far larger than average families. Um, and, you know, getting ready for Shabbos every week, which is, you know, it's like, it's like making Thanksgiving every week. Like getting ready, like when we were growing up, I know. Thanksgiving every week and, you know, the Chagim and the whatever, right. like we have, but everyone's doing it. Every, all the mothers we know are doing this. So we're like, okay, well, you know, these women who are pregnant all the time, they're giving birth all the time. And they're also in some cases working outside the home and they're dealing with all these like little kids and, and, but they're like, well, everyone's doing it. I think it's so important that we take a look and, and have some compassion. Like, this is hard. Like, this is really like, look at the world, like, look at, if you look at the population of the world, like, we're like, less, you know, 0.001%, I don't know, of the world are do, are having, are living this lifestyle that we're living, which is so, it's so, it's so, it's incredibly rewarding, um, and a lot of inspiration comes with it, but it's, it's incredibly demanding, and we need to, like, have compassion, and take, like, yeah, and take the nap when we need. I think it's, because you have to understand, Jenny, we're doing ala teva, also, I mean, wow. from the time, you know, Avram and Sarah, we are a nation of Alateva, all the Himahot, also Leah, you know, there was an infertility, meaning that we're completely and totally physically Alateva. Our capacities are Alateva. They're so above a, I'm just translating above nature. A made above nature. But the problem is, is that if you're comparing, when you're comparing, you're thinking, we're not really seeing, first of all, the real picture of what's really going, I mean, no, I, I just know that my, let's say I've worked with thousands of women literally over the years. And I will tell you, my walls have seen more tears <laughs> and more stories. And it's not the person who's coming from some extreme, you know, like God forbid in the newspaper kind of story. These are just real everyday struggles that are really, it's not easy, but no, no, you're not, you don't broadcast, you know, your, 
you know, no one knows what it's like, you know, no one is, no one's seeing that mommy who's up every 45 minutes or two hours or the one day of the ear infection or the, no one knows these things, you know, no one is applauding you, no one's saying anything. And then you're looking at the neighbor and she's like, oh, wow, she's got, why is she handling it? I only have two kids. She's got eight and look at her, you don't know what's going on. You don't know if she's screaming. I mean, she could totally be handling it, you know, but you don't know what's, you know, I, I it was very interesting because I've lived in a lot of different neighborhoods. I lived in also a lot of different countries and cultures. And I realized that you just can't compare. You really, you can't compare. Also, you can't compare yourself to the neighbor because your upbringing was totally different than probably hers was, yeah. you know? And what's gonna be a struggle for her, for you, you're gonna say, that's a piece of cake, you know? Go take somebody who's never gone to high school and give them a calculus test. I don't think it'd be so easy. And yet on the other hand, you know, go take Mrs. You know, Stanford and put her on a farm and good luck with, you know, making those tomatoes grow. So I, I think it's just a matter of, you know, we have to always just be constantly evaluating ourselves as ourselves. We have to be honest with ourselves. And, and we have to know that we're human, you know? And so if I'm human and my body is finite and human, it means if I'm pushing myself, it's not physically, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, it's, I always see it with women back, like uh, boomeranging, the opposite. Uh, sometimes a spiritual push, I, I, I think that could be good, you know? Closing your mouth, you know, that one smile that you push yourself, you know, a little bit of patience when it, work, when it comes to character traits, you know, thinking before you think, like you speak, that effort I've only seen like good. But when it comes to physical pushing yourself, I, I honestly, in my experience, I only see women break. Wow. Like I don't see wow. it accomplishing anything whatsoever at all. Wow. wow. Yeah. Okay, so I'm sorry, I interrupted you. So we're going back yeah. to basic page. I think to, we're up to the yeah. A. <laughs> we're up to the A, which is, ex it's, it's acceptance, which is going back to, sometimes it's accepting that this is just really hard, you know, and that's okay. It's the and, it's this is really hard and it's also rewarding and beautiful. I don't have to feel guilty. I don't have to say, you know, it's one or the other. It's just an acceptance. Sometimes it's la the acceptance also comes from laughter and humor where you're just like, this is ridiculous. Like the house is a mess. You know, I can't do it. You're right. It's okay. Accept it. Like you're not going to be living in a house, you know, that's perfect and have normal kids. I mean, I don't know. Things are going to break. Things are going to be messy. It's an acceptance of a situation. When we come to total acceptance, also accepting of our children, of our husband, of ourselves, um, it gives you, again, it gives you the sense of, of strength because if you're always finding something, you're always feeling bad about something and you're just you're you're so worn down so the actually the next one is acceptance i've seen this a lot it's been like a game changer you know um for example let's say also you have a mother who's just even the acceptance of i need help you know like wow i i need help and this is a priority i need to hire someone to come once so we can clean and you're constantly finding that you're saying no we don't really need it we don't have the money for it no i could do it the moment you just say accept wow I need help. I'm human. That's beautiful, you know? So I find that A is acceptance is a good tool. Um, and then we have S and our basic, okay? S is really, really important, actually. It's social. It's a social network. This is especially true of the mother who's, you know, I think before when you were living with more family members, when you were living in smaller, closer communities, when women were not necessarily working so much outside the home. So you, you was more, there was just such, like I can give an example for my mother-in-law, Lava Shalom, that for example, she has, there, she's one of eight, okay? And she has four sisters, she had three sisters. There were four, four, there were four girls, four, four brothers. She every day called her sisters. You know, there was this, and they yeah. were like, one was down the street, one was here. They would get together and make, you know, like um, this traditional meals, you know, kippe together. There would be this sense of, you know, she told me after every birth, her grandmother came and moved in for 40 days and took care of wow. her, you know, wow. and the grandkids, meaning her grandmother, who was like, you know, this old Syrian lady came in about her always being at her mother's house, the mother and her, you know, the get togethers. There was, so for her, it was family. So not nowadays, I feel like we're even just, we're living in all over the world. A lot of us are not around our, um, forget about extended. We're not even around our <laughs> nuclear families. Right. And we're, you know, so what do we do? If you don't have some kind of social, if you don't even have another mom, I have one really good friend, for example, 
she's so busy. Leonor, she's got eight kids. You know, I've got my bunch. You know, all my friends are really busy. They're all here on their own also in Jerusalem. And, but just, I know that if I'm having a moment, I can like send her a text. I can call her real quick. And she's going to say, Ilana, I hear you. Okay, we can't talk for now. We don't have time to, I haven't had a coffee with her probably, you know, I don't have time to schmooze, but I need my social. I need something. I need it. And if not, sometimes that's a therapist, honestly, or like a mentor or a Rebbitzin. The social doesn't have to be defined as or family or friend. It could be, but we need social. We need that social um, tool. Mm-hmm. Again, a woman, as I see with postpartum, I've had a lot of clients postpartum who were in post, you know, postpartum. And I feel like one of the actual, one of the, the ways we can prevent postpartum, um, which is a hormonal chemical, I'm not saying, but one way we can, we can help prevent it. And also we can help make it that it's a, sm- a shorter process, you know, of, of, of healing and of uh, recovering is social. I mean, a woman who feels supported, she's got a, the husband that understands that she might need, a, you know, or she not, maybe it's a therapist or just that social network. I find it much more. There's a lower propensity to have to suffer in with postpartum depression than a woman who obviously is on her own, you know, and she's just she's lacking in that. And I really feel that women, especially if they got little kids, they are very isolated. You know, you you you're just so busy physically. Um, and you could sometimes be, it could be raining, you're at home, you know, it could be too hot, you, you know, it's not always the park, it's not always the answer. Right. So, but we do it, we have to look for it. We have to somehow find some sort of social network, maybe it's a chavura, and, um, you know, we have, the, I'm part of this organization called CORE that's beautiful, that's trying to form just small core circles of women, you know, a five, eight, you know, a chavrua or something that, again, not a commitment that it's, oh no, one more thing. <laughs> it's actually something to film me and to give me chizuk and to just know that I'm not alone. So that's really, really important, the social aspect. And so maybe we could concentrate and think about what I always like to think is like, wow, I'm raising a family. Like meaning like, you know, and you're never going to have this picture perfect. Everyone gets along, right? Because we've got all different personalities and they have their yeah. tiku name and they have, but just, you know, I'm always like, you know, like I make that extra effort. Let's just, you know, um, last Friday, it was like our last short Friday, uh, like long Friday. And we quickly, we, tr- we went after, you know, we went on a hike. You know, just like as a family, right? So it's just this, can we just find pockets of time also where I just think, wow, it's the next generation that I want to instill in them, you know, how beautiful it is. You don't have to get along as far as liking everybody's, you know, you know, taste, but that you have each other. So it's yeah. very important. Yeah. Social. Right. So now what, we have what, our, what do you, what do you yeah. think about the whole, I mean, a lot of people now, are filling up that social with like social ah, media and what social media. Yeah. So I find it's a catch to it. We're, it's it's a double edged sword. But core, core is core is probably also like for WhatsApp or how do you communicate? So actually, uh, initially, the way even I was trained in core was all on Zoom, which is fascinating. Like I now have these core friends that are in England, um, Israel, Amer- all over United States, you know, Canada, Mexico, like all over North America. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have one in Australia, and it's for sure. For sure, the the new that I can be talking to you on Zoom. I know also just my own personal, like a quick I WhatsApp my mother every day. You know, I mean, I, I call her every day. You know, just for five seconds, I'm I'm able to. You know, just you keep you know this quick kind of like I said, a busy mom. But Jenny, there's a backfire, which is two things. One is three actually. Number one is that I get worried about the competition. You know, I think people use social media as they're like a lot of times they, like you start seeing all the pictures you start seeing all these things and you just yeah. feel bad about yourself you know and nowadays you could anyone can look good you know what i'm saying you just like you know i don't know what these things are called uh there's a word for it how to um, photoshop that's it photoshop or, yeah so you have to be very careful that it doesn't get you into this competition kind of thing like just dinners and then it's like people make dinners and taking a picture of it yeah and and I'm like whoa and the other thing that I think is really honestly it's almost dangerous for mothers is just it sucks time and then you're like if if a person's up to if you're not sleeping it's going to affect your mental capacity and your physical you're going to be an emotional so if a person gets sucked into these things I think they Honestly, I didn't have this in my basic pH, but I'm maybe I should add a letter somewhere and add it into is that you have to set boundaries, I guess, because otherwise you're going to end up not having time and being so busy because it, it just it really it sucks you in to the amount of time. And I think that that is um, 
And then you're not even focusing on your kids, really focusing. I'm saying, you know, on the one hand, it's connection, but it's such a disconnection, you know, like, so it's very important to have boundaries and you're talking to your husband, you're talking to your kids, like, you know, like, I, I can't imagine why a woman wouldn't, wouldn't turn off her phone when she's, you know, at nighttime. Like, I'm like, why is it on? Why would, I mean, unless you're a doula or doctor, yeah. you know, I, I had even a woman come to me for a massage and she had the, the phone on and I was like, what I was like, I told her, I was like, you're not, no one's gonna like one hour, just shut it up. You're trying to be relaxed and you're on, you know. So I do feel like we live in like it could be very problematic. I feel like it'd be very draining. And also in birth, you know, after birth, I'm like, you must shut off your phone. You're not obligated wow. to tell the whole world. And yeah. with your with your kids, you know, it's like, of course, there are things that you need to respond to. And I, I, I think it's actually we have to be careful because I think it could drain us more physically and mentally. Yeah. And then the third thing also, just to keep in mind with, most, with all these things is it's just perpetuates. You're going to see what you want to see. Meaning if I have an idea in my mind and I look it up, that already computer, whatever it is, Facebook, Google, whatever, knows that I'm in, like, they're going to just send me what I'm interested in. So um, we just have to keep in mind, nothing's objective. I mean, that that's for sure. But, oh, what but do you mean? So like you're looking up about like, uh... let's say as an EMA, I want to look up, I get this a lot. Um, as an Ema, I'm worried my my kid has a certain rash or a certain. Yeah. I'm just talking more yeah. or a certain. I don't want to. Um, or a certain, insomnia. Your sudden, child. Your child is in an insomnia. Yeah. Okay. Right or insomnia. Right. So mm -hmm. I'll Google this. Right. I'll go to Doctor Google. And actually, it was quite funny because during all of COVID, I got asked a lot of questions, and I was always like, "My Doctor Google is not smarter than your Doctor Google." My answer wow. is always like, "I don't know. I can't. How mm -hmm. could I know? That no one knows, ain't it?" But um, that was just my personal, as a professional, I was like, I'm not giving advice. I'm so ignorant, you know, give me a textbook, give me scientific studies, give me these kinds of things. I'll, I'll look into something, but just Googling things, I'm not gonna. So what's interesting, let's say I look up something for a child of mine or, or a therapy. So that's actually, I think a good one. Let's say I, I think that possibly a child of mine might, might have some kind of impediment, speech impediment or development impediment. So I start Googling these things. So first of all, I'm probably gonna like flip out, think that this is like the most extreme thing. I'll get everyone, you know, and because already they know that you're looking about this. So yeah. they'll send you every article about every person. I find more, it causes a lot of paranoia and panic in a mother. It doesn't cause a sense of, feeling oh okay this is what's happening information and then the other thing i find it causes a lot of confusion because literally so and then you you start to google and then it'll see what you're interested in so it will only send you according to that method like let's say you're very much into natural so it'll start selling you all like a hundred different things that you could buy natural to help your child with this thing yeah, but maybe the, actually the answer is you just need conventional speech therapy, you know, and, okay, you know, so I find <laughs> that we have to just keep that in mind, you know, and um, it is information is important facts are empowering which I'm going to get to actually soon, but we yeah. just have to be careful. That's very interesting that hadn't occurred to me that's interesting. Yeah, okay, yeah, so moving on. What do we have I, to an eye? Okay. I so I is actually imagination which I think in order to be healthy, <laughs> in order to feel strong, in order to feel balanced, we need imagination. We need to sometimes be able to just laugh and to be creative and imagine. We need to know that just as this thought is, maybe Hashem put a thought into my head. Okay, but that doesn't mean I cannot create and imagine something else. You know, like if, an example, I'm having an overwhelmed day. Why can't I imagine my house being the base of Dash? I'm not fooling myself. Mm -hmm. I'm using my creative force, which also I tap into a woman as she has ovaries, which is a potential for creativity. You know, this, this creative force inside of us. So why can't I be imaginative? And I get sometimes women will tell me, oh, Lana, I'm not creative at all. There is a force inside of you that's creative. You can have imagination. And as a mommy, sometimes you're just so tired and you want something picked up. So Matt, tell your kids, all of a sudden we have a garbage dump. The garb, you know, you're going to be Mr. Garbage Collector. You're a Mrs. Uh, the one who yeah. screams, you know, hold on to the thing. And you just start getting imagination. We have to be creative. We have to laugh at ourselves. We have to imagine also, like, just as I'm having this thought now, I can have another thought. You know, I can have yeah. another scenario in my mind, you know. So I actually think imagination is a great way of dealing with stress, of feeling overwhelmed by being an Ima you know, feeling that sensation of like, wow, I'm drowning, you know, you start to ima imagine a lifeboat really taking you and just wow. pulling you out of this. Imagine, imagine the kids 
you know, project and like, it's okay. So, Bezat Hashem. And then we have C, which actually is cognitive, which goes back to what we were talking about. Cogn cognitive? Um, cognitive? Yeah, but, which is just information. That's empowering. Like, let's say a mommy knows, for example, that um, you could be very tired and anemic, okay? So I just like to sometimes have factual information. I like sometimes say to mommies, you know what? Just go get a blood test. She, let's say she's complaining to me, she's really tired. Now, mostly she's probably tired because she's not sleeping. Yeah. But also once a while, once a year, once every six months, just go get a blood test. See how your vitamin D is, see how your iron is. Then we have like concrete. Also, let's say a mommy's really worried about her kids. I get this sometimes that she feels the kid's eating too little or the kid's eating too much or whatever. So I say to them, let's just get some facts here. Let's have cognitive information. Go to a pediatrician, go to a, a, you know, a diet, like just weigh the kid, like get facts mm -hmm. here. Don't start jumping into this, you know, what, but again, information has to be very, you have to be careful with information. You, you know, you, you have to know, for example, also mommy who knows, you know what, I need to get my kid to an appointment at three. So if I have information that a tool weighs, tells me it takes me 45 minutes to get there, I have to, in order not to be stressed about it, why don't I program that an hour I have to leave? Meaning for sure the 15 minutes of last minute bathrooms, again, the water, you know, just factual cognitive information is very helpful in us feeling not worn out and depleted. Right. Wow. I love, yeah. I'm, I'm loving talking with you. You are such like a fountain of like inspiration, <laughs> of like inspiration information. This is like, so it just, it this is wonderful. Okay. So PH, Thank reaching you. the end, yeah. And then we have a pH, which okay. really is, okay, this is just getting what's called basic pH. It's really the basics here. So pH stands for physical, which I find that sometimes mommies go to the two extremes. One is either they completely don't take care of themselves. They, they make themselves into a, a, a rag, a shamata, as we would say, you know. Um, it's like this martyrdom of like, yeah. just push yourself a little bit more. You know, how could I fit in exercise? Who cares what I, you know, just let me, I'll, I'll, I'm so tired, I have no time. I'll just grab the, I'll just grab that piece of cake. Um, it's the martyrdom also in the extreme of like, how could I possibly sleep? There's no time for, you know, I can't rest. Or you get the other extreme of an ima who thinks that she has to control so much the physicality of herself or her children that it's, it's a little bit too much. So also she's not very healthy or balanced because if she's so much is controlling every single nutrients and every and she has so much that if i don't get eight hours of sleep i'm going to be a disaster well you're already programming yourself that you have mm. to be realistic you know if you're already programming yourself that if no matter what i'm going to exercise for an hour right. it's a little bit but there's a balance there's a balance that's i'm really into balance i'm into the basic ph was a balance of you don't have to okay you don't have an hour so find seven ten minutes to exercise go for a walk but don't tell right. me you don't have any time to take care of yourself you know or um, just practical tips for mommies, you know? You're busy. I'm not expecting you to cook up and make this in gourmet salad, and, but there are so many things you can just have in hand, but you can boil up a whole bunch of eggs. You know what I'm saying? Like already there's a protein. You can, yeah. you know, you can involve your kids to cut some vegetables. You can buy frozen vegetables, you know, look for ways where it's not that I'm like depriving myself of all good things that I want to eat, but just yeah. work practically that's within my budget, that what's in my hexer, that's within my realistic that I know that, can I just maybe add in one more cup of water? You know, I, I find a lot of times mommies will go hours without drinking. You know, once the kids get home, like from two to eight, I, it's like, you don't drink. Yeah. You're not, and you need to hydrate yourself. So, and the sleep again, also, okay, it's not realistic for me at this stage in my life to get eight to nine hours of sleep. Let's get real here. But can I, turn off the phone again at, you know, can I wind down at 10 that I'm not going to bed at two o'clock in the morning, you know, I'm going to bed at 1130. Like, I think you have to be, you know, focused on that. This is a priority. Our physical, our body is a kli, which means a vessel and it's a garment. So Hashem gave us this present of a garment. And just like if I were to go out to, you know, let's say when shopping and I got this beautiful new dress, and then I start taking scissors and just cutting it up for, you know, like saying, well, it doesn't matter. I'm so, I'm, I'm abusing or mistreating or I'm not appreciating it. So yeah. I think our body's the same way. We have to feel good about ourselves. We have to feel beautiful. Hashem gave us this beautiful body, which is beautiful. Women are beautiful. We have to appreciate, we have to take care of it. 
And there's that balance where, you know, like, you know, if, you know, if something doesn't need dry cleaning, you don't need to dry clean it, just put it in the washing machine, but you know, you need to take care of it. There needs to be taken care of. So it's the same thing with our bodies, our physical health. And um, I find that we very easily as a mother find excuses. Like everyone comes first and then you're like, and then you also feel bad also. You end up sometimes exploding, overreacting because you're hungry, you know, because you are thirsty. So if you were to do that first, it's the best thing you could do for your children is to be a healthy, balanced, happy mommy. You yeah. know, like, and forget about the kids. For you, <laughs> as an Eved Hashem, as just your a creation, knowing that you're the daughter of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, you, you know, that you're taking care of yourself. You know, you're going to go in a car, you'll put on a seatbelt because... This is your responsibility, your body's responsibility. So I'm very much into, but it has to be realistic. Um, so setting small, definable, realistic goals for your physical, you know, taking care of yourself. And also that is within an average, you know, it doesn't have to be um, not this mental picture of what I think health is, ideally. You know, I don't have to be all keto and gluten-free and paleo and blah, 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 blah. I just have to, it's a middle ground. It's going back to basics. It's basic things that probably the less processed, the more whole grain, the more I'm going to nurture. I mean, I found that energetically when I eat properly, you know, more balanced, I for sure feel better than I'm having these sugar high crash, you know, feeling so heavy. So, and the exercise of the endorphins the feeling, but again, it doesn't have to be for a, an hour. It can really literally be 10 minute walk. Right. Right. So wow. It's a balance. Yeah, and I'm so happy that so I take all these you. tools. What? <laughs> Thank you. No, I, so I take all these tools and I try to incorporate where can you fit, you know, again, one's going to speak more to a person, but really the idea is just finding your balance, going back to yourself, knowing that also if you, if it's tuning into like, wow, if I'm feeling depleted, I, I need to do something also, please get help. Like, don't just schlep it out. As we would say, don't just drag it along. You know, it's not, Sometimes it is time, you know, sometimes it is just passing those nine months of pregnancy and then you'll have the baby and then yeah. you won't have that sciatica. But, um, but a lot of times it's just, it's almost like a neglect. It's a self neglect. So we have to really take responsibility. And we also, I feel like always tap into the beauty of what you're doing and, and, um, and knowing that it really is truly, I'm telling you, as I said in the beginning, I don't care what accomplishments out there of a degree or, or or of an award I'm not taking that with me after 120 years you know what I'm saying hey. like what am I leaving behind what am I you know as I'm really honestly saying is those moments where I really was working on my patients where I was smiling where I was just trying the best that I could that where I put so much effort and the kid still you know doesn't know how to ever hold the pencil you know what I mean yeah and and you did it and it's okay. And you put the effort and you say, when you get to Shemayim, is that Shem, you get to, up, you know, after 120 years, you say, Shem, I, I gave it my all. Like I took care of your kids. I took care of myself. I tried. And I tried to be yeah. the best person I could be. So I think that's the healthiest, really. Our mental, emotional, and physical health are so tied in. When a woman's stressed, for sure, her physical, any physical ailment that you have will come out 100 times more. Like that backache, the migraine, the headache, the sciatica, the varicose vein, you know, when you're stressed, it's going to be a yeah. hundred times more. So if we tap into the beauty of what we're doing, into our inherent wellness, our inherent goodness, that Hashem loves us also, and, mm -hmm. that, um, and that it's hard and it's okay also, just that acceptance. Yeah. Um, can you talk about, can you talk about in our, um, like, have, have you seen like a psychiatric medication, like that that's been helpful to women in different situations? In specific situations, again, I'm not against any tool. You know, I will not get up there and say, um, I will do the opposite. I will get up there and say, whatever you, whatever works, we're going to use. And there are some situations where, for especially I've seen in postpartum depression, for sure. Um, I am, my tendencies, I like natural. I mean, I, I, I will tell you, I'm going to be honest with you. I always will tell like for women in labor, I'll say, personally the more natural meaning what i mean by natural is the least amount of medical intervention usually mm -hmm. has a healthier outcome actually um but i always say that everything is a tool so if we need that then thank god it's there and if a person needs you know any kind of medication for anything i've been so humbled it's not psychiatric but for example i have a thyroid problem um i have a thyroid disease and i will tell you i trade everything right you have, you have, you have what 
I have thyroid disease. It's very oh. common, actually. I have thyroid disease. And I tried everything, you know, I, you know, and I do a gluten free and I did so many different kinds of things and all the acupuncture and everything. Nothing like at the end of the day, I take medicine, you know, and I have complete, as you would say in Hebrew, shlemus. I have complete um, yeah, and peace with I, that decision. Peace with that because I know this is what I need to do and it's okay, you know? So I find that, but that being said is that we shouldn't go to medications necessarily as an only, you know, like the first thing to jump on is you medicate yeah. because there are always side effects, which is also truth. You know, like I've had a lot of women, for example, for whatever, we have to, you have to see what's going on. Like I've had a lot of bad side effects to different medications um, and a lot of things that, wow, maybe if the woman just changed her diet or got help, then she wouldn't need to, you know, be on an antidepressant, you know, but it could be, it could be any way she needs and it's okay. I'm not against anything actually, but I just think you have to look at a big picture. And when I was really kind of the medical system with me is I felt like I would go to a doctor and he would only narrow in on one thing. There wouldn't be the whole picture, but I'm very holistic in that way. Like, let's look at the mommy. Let's see right. what, everything that's going on. You know, mm -hmm. a, a person just to go on antidepressants. Well, if she's not sleeping and no one's helping her, maybe if we got her some help, and we yeah. got someone to hold the baby for two hours, you know? So yeah. I find like one time I had a client who was from uh, Brazil and she was only two weeks after birth and her doctor put her on antidepressants without any history of this. It was her first baby. And I was like, wait a minute, what's happening? She's here all alone. It was during COVID. Her, her parents were trying to get in the country. They couldn't. She had just moved to a, a neighborhood where she had no friends or family. So I was like, wait a minute, before we start this antidepressant after two weeks of birth, can we just first like get you some a support system? And yeah. that was the answer, like that really was the answer. So I, I feel like sometimes we have to be a little bit cautious. But on the other hand, I've had cases where a woman will suffer and suffer month after month after month. And years and, and years and years. And yeah. ye or years and years, God forbid. And I'm like, please try this medication. Like, that's litchatchila. That would be the best case scenario for you and your situation is what Hashem wants you to do. Mm -hmm. So there's no right or wrong with these things. We have to look at the whole picture, see the woman as a whole, see her family situation. It's the same thing with health. It's the same thing with nursing. Um, there's no right or wrong. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, this is maybe plan A. And we also have to have a plan B because Hashem, then, you know, yeah. there's no yeah. one one script one fits all um i found that a lot also with this whole test of covid there were so many different opinions and was so confusing and it still is and people are living in a really we're living in the times before mashiach um and it was really like uh, a test for me was i think our biggest test was not to be judgmental was to just try to find your clarity not to be judgmental because you have to know that they also have their clarity, whatever that they is or who they are. Mm -hmm. um, and as a mother, I think, I mean, I, I hope I, I would want us to give that over to our children also that like, it's okay to get help, you know, and yeah. it's okay that, you know, we try different things. And if something's not working, then please, we're going to try something else. Like you should just know mommy, Mommy's open, you know, yeah. going back to the womb flexibility. <laughs> wow, I love that. Yeah. Also, I love just going back. I'm going to, we're, we're already in an hour. I'm finishing up. But um, I love what you said about the ovaries because you said about, about the imagination because an, an ovary is something that's just sitting dormant inside of you. It's the source of ultimate creativity, the creation of a human being. It's just sitting dormant um, from the time you're born. Right, am I right? Yeah, so like... Um, you should just know the no. It's she's. It's already from the meaning. It's actually the potential is already when you were in embryo, meaning wow. you were in your maternal grandmother's. Also, meaning because you and your mother's egg, right? So, the, they actually have a lot of studies about this with like um, let's say Holocaust survivors. There are some studies about trauma, like meaning this generational trauma, because that, you know, I don't know how you would how you would actually scientifically prove this in a way, but I'm saying that there is studies about that that embryo was carried in that maternal grandmother. So whatever she wait, wait, can you through, just, say, can you just explain to me, Stanford graduate here, can you, right. how, how, <laughs> sorry, how, how did that work? How was I in, like, how okay. was, okay. Yeah, yeah, physically, it's yeah. just a physical thing. 
your mother, the potential, it wasn't actually you because you need a father. You do need a, you need a male component. There's an ovary, you know, there's an ovary, ovum, and then there's a sperm. But, but the half of those chromosomes, that egg, that potential, we're talking about potential, yeah. was in your mother as actually already a fetus. You are, she already had her ovaries, right? So I'm saying when you were a fetus and she, yeah. she was carrying you, meaning she was also carrying your daughters because <gasps> you already had ovaries. So your Ima, Allah Shalom, your yeah. mommy, Allah Shalom, carried all of your daughters. I mean, all of your, um, all of your children, actually, not just your daughters, but just your sons will not carry because they only have a Y and they're not. But I'm saying, so you're, you're, you carried your grandchildren of, of, the, of the female. Of your daughters, not your sons. Am, am I clear or not? <laughs> Sorry if everyone is getting it's a, not me. Okay, just one more time. It's a potential. It's not the actual grandchild, but you carried those 23 chromosomes. Jenny, when you were pregnant, oh, you say okay, it's not the actual ovary, it's the chromosome. No, it is the actual ovary. I know it's the ovary, it's the egg. Yeah. When when you carried Hadas, let's say. Yeah. My oldest daughter. Okay. Of, or your oldest a daughter. I met her when she was, I think, two. You were pregnant with your second, with Halal. So when you met, when you carried her inside of you, she, as a female fetus, already had ovaries. Yeah. I mean, you were carrying the potential. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. Yeah. Wow, okay. I know. It's, so it's, so talk wow. about a chain of generation of wow. potential creativity and, and life. Like we are the carriers of life. Wow, I love this idea because my my grandmother. So my my grandmother, her name was also Hana. I never met her. She, um, she died before I was born, and so and it's like a beautiful idea that actually that I did meet her, that I was inside yeah. of her. Yeah, wow. yeah, it's, it's, it it gives chills, you know, like Amash. it really does. Amash. Yeah, Amash. and just the cough, the strength of a woman to carry. I'm saying I'm so every time I see a pregnant woman, and every time I see a mother, I'm just in awe. Like a million awe. Wow. Um, for my own self, I have to sometimes remind myself, you know, I also need the Ilana to tell me, Ilana, you're doing good. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we need that social network because we get, it's so hard sometimes, you know, when you're in it, but um, it's an incredible koach, you know, and what makes it different between being a Jewish mother and any mother in the world is also incredible koach, right? But yeah. when you tap into that sense of what makes it the difference of a Jewish mommy, is the, is the B here. That's the belief. And belief, that's knowing yeah. that I'm just, I'm not just raising kids here. I'm raising Ebedei Hashem. I'm raising the Shamas. I'm raising souls. Mm -hmm. I'm raising like, you know, these beautiful soldiers um, to carry on, uh, to carry on tradition and to carry on the, the work of being an Ebedei Hashem. And, and we're soldiers, you know, to the most beautiful, wonderful army there is in the world. There's, wow. you know, and <laughs> there's nothing that compares so um, it's a huge, important, mind-boggling job that I feel like it needs a little bit more validation, you know, like yeah. I don't feel like it's getting enough. Yeah. And um, I, I want to actually just end with maybe that is I remember talking to, I was talking to my husband and mind you again, my husband's the Sephardi, very traditional. So we were talking about like nowadays, like he's like, why is it that women feel they have to go out there in order to accomplish? And he's not, he loves, he's totally backs me on everything that I want to do. It's not that he's, He's, he's very traditional, but he's like very easygoing. Like he just, um, and I said to him, well, you know what? It's because no one's validating us. So if maybe we had a little bit of more validation and people like I, her, his mother had such a clarity, she didn't have to be validated. It was such a clarity because right. of her family, her sisters, her environment that the society actually validated back. It's his traditional society validated. So I said, you know what? If maybe people validated, then we wouldn't feel that need that that's the only way you know, we're human, we need validation. So let's at least start with ourselves, Jewish moms as validating ourselves and teaching our daughters and our sons the beauty of what it is to be a Jewish mommy. Yeah, so Ilana, thank you for being my partner. My Ilana, <laughs> is, is the partner of JewishMom.com, IlanaMizrahi.com, actually, so I wanna say that, IlanaMizrahi.com, <laughs> if you wanna get in touch with this, with this amazing woman and learn more about her. But I feel like we're partnering in this and providing validation for moms saying i feel like it's yeah. like where we're coming from yeah. this very successful academic kind of like um that we are partnering and how that, that hashem should grant us um this hood this ability to provide validation yeah. to them to, to to moms and moms should understand wow like 
we're doing this. This is this is important. This is this is enough. If you do anything else, okay. that's great. Do something else. You need to do something Diana. else. Do something else. Yeah. But like this that's is it. enough. Yeah. Okay, that's Ivana. Thank you so really. much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, thank you. It's so good to see you, Jenny. Be well. Yes, thank great you. Great to see you. Bye bye.